Here we are, just out on the start of my conga mission, and you've got to have some chips, man. <whistles> Keep it local. Here we are, fishing friends, and welcome along. Say hello, Mr. Wingman. Hello, guys. Yes, he's back. He's been on a bit of a sabbatical. Well, very briefly. He's <laughs> it's bonfire night, and we're out fishing, by the way. So Brett's just bought his first house, first home. He's off the rental mart. He's in with that, and he's been putting doors in and floors in and all that, haven't you, mate? Yeah, mate. So it's the first time he's been out for a week, and obviously I've been out with larks a lot. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we're out on the river tonight on bonfire night. So you can obviously just heard that. It was like... Mm. And we got, we're going for the conga tonight, so we've got two rods out each. I've just got here, Brett's been here, I don't know, 20 minutes, so his rod's already in. And yeah, so it's obviously November the 5th, bonfire night. Thank you very much, as you can hear in the background. And yes, yeah, so, so we're up at uh, King Billy tonight, just up, up the Tamar, and we're going to tempt an eel or two. So I went the extra mile this morning, as always, uh, because I do like to have a bit of fresh bait. That's my personal choice. I can't really get excited about going fishing without fresh bait, if that makes sense. It's just the way I am and what's worked for me. So down on here, Mr. Annette. <coughs> so there we go. So I've just bought two big cattle from the market this morning from the Marketplace Fishmongers in the Panny Market, which is where my shop is. And I've got some really uber fresh frozen mackerel fillet there. Uh, so I'm gonna do like a little cocktail bait, cutlin, cutlin, mackerel fillet or whatever, yeah. So. I think we better uh, show the folks how to do this, don't you? Dissect a cull. Yeah. So I forgot to mention the tackle and bits and bobs. Yeah. So I've just got um, I've got an old school slosh twenty on there, forty pound main line straight through. Yeah. No leader or anything. It's conga fishing. It's not. Uh, we're not. We're not casting hundred and fifty yards. Yeah. And on the business end, I've got just a simple rotten bottom link to a eight ounce weight. Yeah. Look. So I think that's probably, what, 15 pound line there, the, the, the link. And I've got 200 pound mono. And I've got the nice big Tronix semicircle look there, look. Gonna show us how sharp it is, mate, or not? <laughs> it's, sticky, uh, sticky sharp? Oh yeah, it's it's definitely sticking in there, look. Oh yeah. See? So yeah, he's, he's brand new. That's another another point that He's, Paul likes to make. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my hooks, I'm a bit I'm a bit anal about my hooks, folks. They've got to be sharp, and I'm like, I'm checking them all the time. Um, and that's a good thing to do, like you know, because you will lose fish if your hooks aren't sharp enough. I'm, I'm telling you. So yeah, here we go. So look, I'm going to get in a bit of a mess here, and usually I like to wear gloves, not because I'm a pussy, but I just really don't see the point of getting black hands. But Brett has got thought about a bucket. We do have some water there, don't we, mate? Yeah. So this is only going to help me a little bit, this glove. Okay, so the first thing you've got to do on these cuttlefish, yeah? Uh, this is the cuttle. So anybody that's got a gran with a budgery gar, is that still a thing? Or a parrot? <laughs> right. Well, you often find these in the... They put these in the cages, and it's calcium, isn't it? It's, it's uh, calcium for the birds. So, yeah, so... With these, with these buggers here, look, you've got to be really firm. So push, there we go, look. So once it's popped, it's really easy. And I'll show you now, look. So that just slides out. And sometimes you get a little heart shape in the middle and it almost did there, look. Almost. How cool is that? I have had a proper heart shape in there before. So that's the cuttle, out of the cuttle, yeah? Out of the cuttle fish, sorry. So the only thing that's good for is uh, budgies and small birds, which we don't have any, right? So. On to the next bit. So obviously this is a, it's quite a big girl in it, this one, yeah? Put your, uh, put your hand out for the size, Paul. Yeah, so it's about hand size, isn't it's, it? It's over a pound in weight. Right. Now I have used, at Devil's Point, I've used, I don't know if you remember, I've used one that size and we caught a 20 pound eel on it, that size, honestly. So I've managed to lob out a pound cuttlefish and I've actually caught an eel on that. And I was laughed at, uh, but there you go. I was, who's laughing now? So this one, look, it's too big to do in half. It's, so I'm going to go off with his head, right? So there's a bait there. That's one bait there, right? And then here, you've got as many baits as you want, really. I mean, you can actually... Oh, look. 
at this. Oh, what's inside that? So this is what Mr. Cuttle's been eating. Nice little scad, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Mate. So there you go. That's a little... That'll be going out as bait, wouldn't look, it? Look, look, look. It's a scad, look. If I just get that off. See, it's a scad. Oh, and it's yeah. fresh as well. Mate. <laughs> so I've just got another bait out of that. Yeah. You jammy sod. And guess what? <laughs> guess what? What? There's another one. There it is. There? Yeah. You, you can have that one because it's dead. You can have that one, mate. Right, so there we go. Look, all right, right. Let's let's get, let's get serious again. Right, so I've got two free baits out of that. Okay, so look, we've taken the head out. There's the guts. So that's like the bit that the congas really sniff out and love the brown meat, if you like. So I'm just going to go now. I'm going to go straight down the line like that. And. So there you go, look. So that's quite a big piece, isn't it? So you've got, I mean, if you wanted to, st you could stick that out as one bait, one bait, one bait there for the head. And I've got a little bonus. Brucey bonus. Scad to strap to the side of it, look. Mate, I'd, I'd use the small one. Yeah. Strap them to the side. So, I, now do I go for the head? Because let's face it, everybody loves a bit of head, don't they? Especially Mr. Conga, yeah? <laughs> Keep serious now, all right? Now let's do the, um, Let's do, I see my hand's quite nice at the moment. Well, that's just about to change. Here we go. So, we've done our little demo and, and we was just doing a little bait up there. It's a bit bright, isn't it? Hang on. And yeah, there's a fish on here. I think he's probably already on. It looks like a small one. But Brett didn't have his ratchet on, did he? He's on, mate. Isn't he? No. No? Or well, maybe it was weed. <laughs> it's mate, it's a bit foggy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Right. <coughs> right, that's the vape done. Hang on, let's put that down. <clears throat> right. Three, two, one. So here we are, yeah, we're back on the bait demo, yeah. So Brett just had a little run there and we missed it. So we're back on the bait. So where were we? Oh yeah, we're just about to get dirty. Right. So, big bait, yeah? Nice big hand size bait. And all I'm gonna do is, oops, almost forgot. I'm gonna go in and out there, like that, okay? And I haven't done this for so long. It's so nice to be out. Pierce that like that and then come out there like that. Pull it through. And there you've got a nice a nice protruding hook. And now the elastic. Now Hold I on, don't two seconds, mate. Can I just have a look on the inside and see whether you've gone through the wall? Nope, you've just gone through the actual skin. That's it, yeah. So right. I've just literally pierced the skin because I want maximum penetration Pleasure. from that hook. Right, bait elastic. Now I don't use fine, medium, or heavy elastic when I'm coming fishing, no. I use this stuff from the haberdashery, yeah? When I sell this in my shop, yeah? The old knicker elastic. I don't laugh. All right, and the beauty about this is, and you'll see in a minute, when I start wrapping this up, so I'm just gonna try and close him up. Nice and slowly. And, you know, conga fishing, there's no, there's no real Science finesse, too, finesse no. is the word. There's no finesse, right? It's big baits, big weights, heavy lines. Because they're big fish, yeah? You know, you, you, you're targeting fish up to 100 pound. Even in the Tamar, you, there are fish that size in the Tamar, I'm sure, to this day. Just nobody's ever been able to land one, you know? And I have heard of a few 80s that have been raised, but not landed. So, with that in mind, that's always in the back of my mind that you could, you never know, you could get that Arnie come along and just whack and just do you. Yeah, so look, the beauty of this stuff is, and especially when you're using like fish baits, you can go really hard. So I'm really wrapping that as really tight. Yeah. And you can see it is just starting to bend a little bit. So all I do now is concentrate on that hook eye like that. Because what you don't want, right, look. I'm pushing that, and that's pretty firm, look. See? If that's flopping around like this, 
Mr. Conger's going to come along and he's going to go, ha, 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 and he's going to turn that hook upside down and he's going to make you look a fool. You're going to wind in and that's going to be like wrapped around your trace upside down because that's what they do, yeah? They mouth things, so they come in and they, they don't just go bang like this like you'd expect. They're very, very gentle. They'll come up and they'll, they'll sort of poke around at it and they'll have a little, and they'll actually pick it up and they'll swim off with it and they'll turn it in their mouth before they swallow it. They're, they're incredible fish. They've got my utmost respect. And I absolutely love targeting conger, yeah? It's the only thing that really pulls back like after a big bass. You know, after, after you've had a few double figure bass in your lifetime or whatever, this is the next step, guys. This is like next level stuff, yeah? It, it's proper fishing, yeah? It's really hardcore. So that, look, my friends, that is number one, that's my bait. That's all I'm gonna do is just stick that out. And if you look, that's still, that's a big bait, isn't it? So it's what, the size of what? Like about three squid, isn't it, or something like that? Yep. Yeah, so it's a big bait. So yeah, just to finish off, a couple more turns around there and then do the loop-de-loop -loop through the gap like that. Ooh, look at this black all over me string. All right, gather it up, gather it up gently, gently and just, gently pull it back and there you have a really nice bait now on the next bait I'm gonna put some mackerel I'm gonna put a smaller bait out um, I'm gonna put a slab of mackerel on the side but that doesn't need it and, and all those juices are like tucked away in there uh, yeah so that's it man that's uh, that's bait number one and that's me heading for the bucket go and wash your hands sir, sir. <laughs> the unveiling of whatever it is <laughs> is it a bird is it a plane um, no, it's a scad. So there you go, that's gold, look. So I, I paid dear for this bait this morning, but I've actually got a couple of free baits, look. How the hell? What, you think of you think of a cuttle's, a cuttle's mouth? Yeah. How the hell have they got that in there? Yeah, you can see this, look at the size of it compared against yeah. your weight. Yeah. And that was jammed inside there, wasn't it? Oh, uh, well, I, know, I know what's happened. It's, it's basically, it's gone in the trawl, hasn't it? Trawl in it, it's gone up inside him. And it's stuffed Stuck it. it. So here we are, we just had some lunatics over on the opposite pier set off one of these boxes of, what, 35 bangers or something, mate. Awesome, wasn't it? Yeah, mate, it was uh, you, something you? else, wasn't it, mate? Made me jump. <laughs> That's a quick get the camera, so we'll put that in at the end, like, you know? Anyway, so here we are. So there's my second uh, my second rig. I've got a, there's a big nino there, a little tam, a, a big tamers nino. Uh, wide gape, obviously, 200 pound line. And I'm just going to show you my little sexy knot. Hang on a minute, where's me? Oh, where's me intelligent glasses gone? Here they are. All right, sorry about this, guys. Right, so this is the knot that I use in a lot of my rigs, like in my, I've got my own rig brand and everything. So that's my 40 pound line there. Yeah, I've just gone through the swivel and this is the figure of eight. I'll do it big. Oh, here we go. And is it weed? Yeah, mate. Oh, look at the rod tip. Watch the rod. Read the rod. There we go. Mental, isn't it? <laughs> so yeah, there's some lunatics on the pier the other side there. They've obviously spent a bit of money on uh, bonfire night. Anyway, I've got to show you my uh, my very easy knot, my figure of eight knots. So here's my here's my next rig, right? And I mean, this is, we've just done this just now and we were interrupted, so we're actually doing it again. So we start again. These lunatics with all these fireworks. Right. So figure of eight knot. This is. This is in a lot of my rigs that I do for my rig brand. Shown to me by Stuart, Stuart Gray, he's a great angler. Shown to him in uh, South Africa, I believe, when they're on the big bronze whaler sharks. And obviously they use up to like 500 pound mono for this. So there you go, like I've just gone through the, through the swivelly bit, yeah? And then all I do is make a loop. Got that? Yeah, see yeah. it? All right, and then make a second loop. And I don't, need, I don't usually do it this big, I'm just showing you. And then the line goes through the loop, really easy. Hold it with that finger and here comes the figure of eight bit. So this bit here now flips over. Can you see? Yep. Perfect figure of eight. Right, and then obviously you just pull it down tight 
and that sucker has never let me down. Uh, I will say it's not suitable for braid or really anything under sort of 15 pounds, don't bother because there's less friction on lighter lines. But that lock, that knot there is, is, see how small it is? So obviously it makes a difference on your, um, your pulley rigs or whatever rigs you're using because obviously it's a tiny knot, isn't it? So that's my, uh, that's my really nice figure of eight knot. And I'm just gonna zip up one of these baits quickly here, look. So I've got this free scad, which came out of the cuttle just now. And I think that this is, it's still fresh enough. It's still got, if you look, it's still got the original colors on it. It's still it's got really that nice shine. gold hue and everything. So that's how you know that it's fresh. And it's, you know, the cuttle was only caught probably yesterday. So there you go, through the tail. And then what I like to do, oh, here we go, interrupt it again, like that. getting a firework display as well as a bait demo. <laughs> so this win-win situation, man. Yeah. It's a bang, it's a banger. Jeez. It's like, it's like a rack, isn't it? <laughs> Leave me alone. Take cover. I just want to go fishing. <laughs> Right, here you are, look, so back to the bait. So uh, yeah, we're getting a nice display here, look. So there's, there's Mr. Scad, looking a bit glum. And yeah, so if you notice, I've gone out through the top of the head instead of coming out of here. And the reason I do that is that when the, when the bait lands down there, 80 foot down, it's either gonna land that way or it's gonna land that way. It's not gonna land on its head, is it? It's not gonna land like that. So already I've got a pretty good chance of getting that back because that hook isn't snagged is it it's not going in the snags so that's a really really good tip for conga fishing come out the top i've seen some i've seen some weird rigging on facebook lately there was a guy and he had a he had a mackerel i think and the the hook was just coming out of the head at a really really strange angle anyway i digress so there's that's mr scad done there look and i could if i wanted to whack a bit of mackerel but that's quite that is a nice delicate bait there for a conga to pick up you know, it's not massive, it's not a huge mackerel. So that, my friends, is a really, really nice bait. And the only the only thing I'm gonna to do to that now is, see this bit, see this one here, look, this tentacle? All right, I'm just gonna take that off of that cuttle and I'm just gonna make a nice gentleman's sheath over this hook, yeah? Like that. So when Mr. Conga comes along, or Mr. Bass even, He's not even going to know about what's hiding in there, is he? Until he's actually eaten that and he's felt, and then it's too late, he's on, isn't he? So yeah, that's my little tip there. Cool, All right, let's go and catch some conga. Tight lines. All right, so here we are, look. Brett's got some baby stuffed squid. Courtesy of our market tackle and bait. Courtesy of myself, yes, mate. I'm special at the moment. Yes, and, uh... What I've decided to do, uh, I've taken the initiative. You can get, uh, you're going to get stuffed, mate. Oh, I'm going to get stuffed, yes. That's <laughs> what Paul's uh, yeah. quite lightly uh, puts. Here I have some South Devon carp. carp and uh, I've already started one already, but yeah. Paul's uh, wanted to take up the offer. All you do is just snip it down the middle. Yeah. Open him up and you guessed it, get stuffed. Excellent. That's all it is. Uh, uh, and what about the uh, something else you were going to Oh, put yes, in there? yes. Thank you for reminding me. All right. And um, holy mackerel oil? The holy mackerel oil. Yeah, the holy grail. We want a bit. My idea is just want a bit of oil in there. Yeah, just a bit. Extra scent, yeah. Extra scent, and it'll hopefully ooze right out. Ooze right out when we decide to use this. And also, the, um, the cart's very oily as well. And it'll take. Take the smell, down, take the smell of the uh, cart, and put it on the sea. Mm. 
So it's quite a nice little small bait, isn't it? You could use that for cod or anything really, bass. There you That's go, that nice little hand size bait there. Nice little squid bomb. Yeah, like I say, it's, it's nice for anything really, that, isn't it? Anything would eat that. Here's one I made earlier. Yeah, double. Well done, mate. Good luck. <laughs> so here he is, chip eaters come down, look. It only took me 20 minutes to wait for two sausage and chips. Yeah, so... I'm not going to tell you, though, I'm starving. He hasn't brought his rods down, he's just come down to say hello, and on that note, Brett has just had an inquiry. Anything pulling back, son? Not at the moment, mate. It's definitely a fight, mate. So go. I'm getting a bit of... Uh... I'll have him for you, Brett. Too bright, hang on. Get you up in him. That's better. Bring him round there and I'll bring him in for you. So we've just actually wound in, haven't we, Brett? And we've been absolutely swamped with... A ton of weed. This. Weed city. I mean, it's that's a lot of weed. We, it, we struggled, three of us, to get it up over the wall. We've had, oh, Larks, you've missed a nice firework display. We've had some lunatics over there by that boat just on the pier oh, there. Oh, right, they had a fire display, did they? Oh, yeah, yeah, they've had, like, 24 box going off. And, really? Yeah. As we were trying to make a video, well, it's like, bang, bang, bang. Well, you should say that. Thunder and lightning get seals feeding. Does it? So maybe the thunder from the fireworks. Thunderclap. What it does, it vibrates through the wall into the rocks, and then it's like sort of spooks them, and they come out of the holes. Yeah, see what's going on. Well, yeah, it just frightens them. Mm. That's why electrical storms and thunderstorms is good for eels. Uh, it's weed on that, I think. Is it? Yeah. It went, mate. Oh, trust me, it won't no weed, mate. I know a weed bite is like that. I don't want to wind it in. Your bite it's was. I'm out of the water on the other one. Probably a boot they sat there going, hmm, what you got on there? Cuttle. Yeah, chewing on the cuttle. Mmm, lovely. Just like I'm chewing on my chips. <laughs> <laughs> They ain't bad chips, even though I had to wait 20 minutes for them. What do you reckon then, son? I'm going to put him back on the rest for a minute, mate. Get this other one sorted and then uh, have a look on this. Yeah, you can see if he comes back, mate. Storms and so we're, we're, uh, we're really struggling. We can't fish at the moment because of this. And it's, out in, out, shake it all it's, all, it's all coming out of the harbour. And we have just literally had a, a battle here. Look, we've wound in all this rubbish. Is it out here still? It's actually coming closer now. Yeah. What it's doing for? Oh, it's right. There's nothing out there now, look. No, it's just what you said. It's come back in here waiting for you to cast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is he there? No. Oh, you're joking me. Oh. That, that was just going and going and going and going and going, that was. They're being really cagey tonight, mate. I'm lucky, bud. you got to sock it to them, man. So here we are. We just had a massive tangle and about, I don't know, 10 key or a weed come in, a bit of a disaster. There's a fly in my ear there. Hang on a sec. <laughs> Get out, you bugger. Sorry about that. Literally, fly just went in my ear. So there's my bait, look, I've just repurposed it. And there's my free scadder, scadderoonie. Hitching a ride, eh? Mate, yeah, and that's what I call a piggyback bait. Yeah, he's going out now. Say hello to Mr. Eel. Cool. So here we are, look, we just had a bite. Rolling? Yeah, I'm rolling now, mate. I don't know, I wouldn't have said it was a big eel, but it's an eel. Fireworks going off in the background. So I'm just waiting for this uh, little eel to pull right over before I hit it. And I can't remember if it's the cuttle head on there or if it's the other bait. Come on. 
not very obliging. Rolling, mate, for a minute. Oh, still there, look. Here we go. Oh, there he is. Here we go. Mr. Rattle. Not a big eel. I'm going to hit it and on the next pull down I'm going to hit it, see, what, see what's there. Wings. No swearing. Doesn't that give you wind? Here we go. Here we go. Come on, then. He's down, there. He's down there on it. I'm just waiting for the rod to go over. Here we go. Fish on, son. Hang on. That's it, gone, isn't it? Yeah, he's gone. Just let go. Oh. Yep. I'll probably just leave it there. Where did that go? Never mind. Oh, there is weed down there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look. Oh, there you go. Are you filming or what? Yeah. Don't panic, Mannering. Be calm. Right, here we go. We've just got a little slime shady on here. Got to be on there, honey. Got World War Three going off over there. Oh, slack line. Oh, slack line again. We've got to be on there, honey. It's right swimming there. towards me, I think. What's that weed doing on the bottom, Martin? Oh, the weed's still on oh the there you go, look. Just stuck, came right back. Oh, He's there. Yeah. You got him, boy. Oh, yeah. Is it that small? <laughs> Yeah, so we got a small eel. I don't even think it's on, mate. No. Fucking wheel. You don't snap your lead out again. Jesus. Eh? Well, he's done me a, done a, Span it up. He's done a right done so, you know, out. that's what we call a boot lace. A boot lace job. Yep. Spun up. Well and truly. Done me. All right, we on? Yeah. Right, well, here we are, look. Third time lucky, maybe. Here we go, look, look, look. Mate, I think he's on. I know. Look, 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 let's pull it over. Wait till it pulls right over, Paul. Oh, well. Slap by me a bit there, see that? This is a bigger eel. You know you want it. Yes, yeah, so we've been unlucky so far tonight. We've had a few drop runs and maybe struck a bit early. Come on. A 
They've been a bit fussy tonight, haven't they? Yeah, mate. Don't think they're getting their point. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, we've got to get one out, haven't we? We're at low tide now, so we're uh, you know it's we're right down on the bottom of the tide. It's the best time. So there we go, that was our first attempt at eel fishing and we basically didn't get any. But thanks for tuning in guys, it's been really, really good tonight. It was nice to get out wingman, eh? Yes, uh, it's we had been really four, good. We had about four or five chances, but you know, I had one that could have been a double, but we'll never know. And that's eel fishing, I'm afraid. Um, but yeah, lots of good tips in there guys. So thanks very much and don't forget to subscribe, like, etc. Leave a comment. Leave a nice comment, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Thanks very much. Tight lines. And he will get the point one day. He will get the point, mate. You know me.